Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. I wish to Dr. Nurhani Amar Ibrahim and my fellow classmates. So my name is Amar Afif bin Rizal. I'm from GA24238 and today I'm gonna share with you my individual assignment. So let us start. So I got two questions for this individual assignment, both from past examinations December 2014 that consists of four marks for each of it. So let's have a look. The first question explain two differences between Fisher's quantity theory of money and Cambridge's approach. Fisher's view that velocity is fairly constant in the short run will transform the equations of exchange into the quantity theory of money, which states that the nominal income is determined solely by the movement in the quantity of money. So we can see in the equation of exchange where the nominal income, which is the P times Y, are being affected by the movement of M, which is the money supply, because of V, the velocity of money, are being held constant. Then he believes that people hold money only to conduct transactions and have no freedom to choose the amount they wish to hold. In fact, the demand for money are determined by the level of transaction generated by the nominal income and the institutions that affect the way people conduct transactions. While the Cambridge economist asks how much individuals will want to hold the money, which means that individuals are allowed some flexibility in their decisions to hold money and are not completely bound by the institutional constraint, such as whether they can use credit cards to make purchases or not. So individuals holding money because of the two functions. The first is serve the purpose as a medium of exchange, and second, Store of wealth, which is the level of people's wealth, also affects the demand for money. And furthermore, the wealth component of money demand is proportional to nominal income, which means that the higher the nominal income, the more wealth that the individual will hold. Moving on to the second differences, which is the effect of interest rate. So Fisher's quantity theory of money suggests that the demand for money is purely a function of income and interest rate have no effect on the demand for money. So we can see when the money market is in equilibrium, the theory of money demand is equal to the K times PY, where the K is the inverse of the velocity of the money. While the Cambridge approach are taking into considerations on the effect of interest rate on the demand for money, Cambridge economists express the money demand function as MD equal to K times PY, where it looks identical to Fisher's but replacing the K as the interest rate, making a difference from the previous. So the K or the interest rate will fluctuate in the short run because the decisions about using money to store well will depend on the yields and the expected return on other assets that also functions as a store of wealth. The second question of the assignment. So what are the determinants of money demand according to Friedman? So this is a modern quantity theory of money. The first is income and wealth. So these two components tend to move together. When income is higher, wealth is likely to be as well. Hence, higher income means greater wealth. And according to Friedman, indicates that the demand for money assets will rise and the demand for real money balances will be higher. We can see at the formula above, the YP, which is the wealth or the permanent income, will have the positive relationship with the real money balance, which is the MD divided by the P. Second is interest rate. So as interest rate rise, the expected return on money does not change. However, the return on alternative assets, such as bonds and equity, goes up. Thus. Although the expected absolute return on money did not change, money's expected return relative to bonds went down. In other words, higher interest rate makes money less desirable and make the demand for real money balances false. We can see at the formula, which is the RB and RE, the expected return on bonds and the expected return on stocks or the equity, if these two components went up, it will bring the negative impact or the negative relationship for the real money balance, which is the MD divided by the P. And the other factor that determines the money demand according to the Friedman 
is risk. So according to Friedman, risk is always measured relative to another asset. Thus, if the stock market becomes more volatile, so money can become less risk relative to stock hands, demand for the money will increase. In addition, we can see the wide view of the factor that determine the demand for money in this summary table. So I hope you guys learn a lot from these presentations and with this, I would like to wish Happy Teacher's Day to our beloved lecturer, Dr. Nurhani Abba Ibrahim and Happy Ramadan to everyone. Stay safe. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.